Well, 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 welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. It is a very late Saturday morning over here from Helsinki, Finland, but I would like to wish you the best, the best, and the happiest because it's gonna be a little bit of a shorter video today and I actually sincerely mean that. What I'm gonna do from now on, unless there's like any major objections, but uh, what I'm thinking from now on is that I'll do like sort of a shorter video on Saturday and then a long-term analysis video on Sunday. So I do have a lot of things prepared for the Sunday video of which we could maybe go over a little bit of hopium scenarios, if you will, but the main idea still very much are a mainstay here. And the best, the best case for boo loss, to put it quite bluntly, is sideways within a range for the next few months. It is going to be rather boring at best, and at worst, we will see a major massive dump into the $20,000 territory of which we will discuss uh, more or less tomorrow. We might put a few markers on it today, but that's what I really want to say for the long-term analysis video. Today, I wanted to focus it on the short term. And so with that said, let's waste no time. Let's just get into it right here, right now, and start off with our short-term time from analysis, of which we go down to an hourly in this case. And what do we see? So Bitcoin did hit our $36,000 target yesterday, which was born off of the rejection off the four-hour 200 zip moon average from the day prior to, or sorry, actually two days prior to that on the 17th, that is. And now we find ourselves a little bit lower in the overnight session. So with that in mind, what are we looking for right now? Well, actually would be looking for a little bit of bouncy bounce behavior over here coming in from our June uh, 12th lows that we spoke about from yesterday. And while I would expect a bit of choppiness over the weekend, ultimately, I don't think that we're going to see anything too crazy here, to be fair. Now, with that in mind, we have a pretty obvious range going on for the hourly right here, a bit of a base right around 34, uh, six to 30, basically 34, six to, uh, to 35,000 bucks. And as long as we're above there, I would be preparing for a little bit of sideways and a little bit of upside, perhaps a bit of a bounce, not calling a reversal here or anything like that, but a bit of a bounce certainly over the weekend is not asking for too much. At least I would so think uh, we can go over here to a momentum charts, uh, which we can and go down all the way to the very low term time frames of which the hourly is showing upside momentum continues as long as we're closing above 35.2 so that is the magical number right there buy hourly is showing at 34 at nine three hour is showing 35.4 and four hour is not quite there as well but 35.7 is the magical number so we can see a bit of a domino effect right there and realistically where's that uh, 35.7 number on the four hour that'd be coming in line very likely with that 21 exponential average probably a little bit later today assuming that we do continue with the sideways action right here, which I do, do think is rather likely. So with that in mind, if we were to pop back above that region or just, you know, very bluntly put if we're using an hourly right here, which honestly over the weekend, I mean, wouldn't be the worst idea here. Uh, any sort of a closure above this region, especially 36,150 ish region, I would be looking for Bitcoin to rally up. Uh, perhaps even all the way up to uh, deeper 36, like somewhere around 36, eight to 30, maybe even 37,000 bucks. Again, I would be very, very careful about saying anything more of a, uh, you know, of like a greater reversal here. This is only short term stuff. And realistically, if I were to just kind of document the range for today, it'd probably be something like this. Now, of course, that obviously does operate or sorry, that does offer up um, contingencies on the other side as well. And if Bitcoin does break this area to the downside, just anywhere below our June 12th lows, if you want to use a wick basis, that's probably good enough. 34, 630 is the magical number right there or on a closing base probably say about 34 7 34 8 and i would be looking for bitcoin to get the next sort of uh, droopy drop all the way down to our 33 5 uh, to maybe even all the way down to about $33,000 base, wherever the last daily close, uh, closing low was. Yes, yeah, so actually about, uh, yeah, about low 33,000 bucks. And I believe that is in line with CME 200 moon average here as well. Yeah, a little bit lower than that, actually. But of course, they don't trade over the weekend. So that is a null point. Now, what I want to bring you over to here is something that we spoke about earlier this week that was a possibility of happening now being confirmed as happening. And that would be the daily uh, DMI minus, not just getting dominant, but the ADX strengthening alongside that as well on top of, well, basically a, a failure right here back down to the low side of the range daily macd turning down as well as is smi so all not good things uh you know uh all combined but realistically how long can this go on for well remember six thousand bucks in the year 2018 i'll bring you back over to this right here where a bitcoin would come down based off six thousand bucks put in all these anemic rallies one after the other one after, one after the other and another and the other just the domino effect and then eventually it gets so weak that it actually does break down so i wouldn't necessarily be calling or looking for like a full-on melt to new lows from this exact region right here um, especially like today, for example, but Intel Bitcoin really closes below, let's call it like the 377, which is around that last daily low at about 33.5 is at the point where I would start to look for that next sort of melt move to the downside, somewhere around about 29,000 bucks for a quick move. And then I want to see the weekly close below about 32,500 
for full confirmation of a sustained move into the $25,000 region, perhaps even lower than that over time down to uh, 19 or 20,000 bucks. With that in mind right here, I would still be giving this time this a little bit more time to transpire. And of course, we do have we do have um, uh, next week's major expirations coming up. So with that in mind, I do I do imagine that we're not going to see any sort of major reversals until then. But that could be a decent pivot as people do roll their positions on to the next quarter for both options and of course, futures contracts as well. And that's, you know, one of the bigger expirations. So typically speaking, you will see a lot of price action based upon there. But for right now, sideways and down is essentially the name of the game. And these are the loves that I'll be looking at right here. Actually, let's just go back to this chart because it's a little bit better, uh, better streamlined. And realistically, I mean, there always needs to be like a sort of trappy uh, confirmation on the other side as well for the boo laws here. So meaning they, a bear trap on the other side, where did you start to uh, identify that? Well, realistically there's no talk about that at all whatsoever right now as long as you're below especially the 21 on the daily which is about 37 750 but even then uh, i would i would go as far as saying that as long as you're below you know 39,000 bucks or 39.5 that last sort of swing failure right here that would be my sort of line in the sand for suggesting that uh, perhaps we actually do have a sane upside move you know playing into what we spoke about over the last couple of weeks with the bi-weekly macd bringing it back on over here and this is the one long-term thing that i'll just reference right here i do want to bring up this as a possible Possibility. So remember the bi-weekly MACD, we were focusing on this quite a fair bit saying that, hey, anytime that we have gotten the downside cross on the bi-weekly MACD, all of those have essentially led up into a bull trap and then further continuation to, well, actually new lows. And uh, we can just go over it very, very briefly right here. We see this last one coming in from October 2019, a very similar situation, by the way. Bitcoin spends about, what, three months consolidating at the top right here, drops down around the white 20 simple, bounces up into the non expansion average, rejects and down, bases on the 55 and eventually even trades lower than that as well. Same thing over here in 2018, right? Bitcoin based off the 21, bounces into the into the non expansion average, rejection and bull trap down to the 55 and eventually low over time as well and same thing in 2014 as well actually as bitcoin does base off the 20 cent moon average right here once again bounce up into the nine expansion average after getting the downside cross by the way big portion right there and bull trap down we go to the 55 base there and break lower for ultimate low of that's uh you know of that uh, session so you know the question to myself right now is is uh you know if you've been tuning into these videos for the last uh, few weeks here i was postulating perhaps a move into the deep or uh, into the deep or mid like forty thousand dollar territory because that is essentially where we do have the nine expansion average but as you can see right here with this rejection, uh, it, you know, would this essentially fit the bill for what, you know, for what that would look like historically speaking? I suppose yes. Um, I suppose yes. So that's kind of what I was going off of and judging, you know, that potential bull trap situation into the mid forty thousand dollar territory. Realistically, we got up to what? We got up to forty one five. And what does that essentially suggest? So it's just that Bitcoin's a little bit weaker than what I first considered, which is not necessarily the best thing of all time. Like I said, I will have a few hopium related things coming into the picture tomorrow, but I do want to save like a full dedicated video for that because while it is interesting, you know, I want to keep like the like the more streamlined technical analysis away from the more like ephemeral uh I wouldn't say silly, but like just less tangible analysis that's way fucking far out there. And, uh, you know, I also don't want to spread the right, the wrong message as well in the sense that like, look, at the end of the day, man, like this is not a, this is not a signal of strength right here. You know, these last these last few days. Um, so the big, you know, the big, the big thing was coming back down below about 39,000 bucks. We also do have a, an impending death cross on the exponential moon averages, which I'm sure a lot of people are talking about the simple moon average death cross, which probably if, uh, probably, or may, might've already happened. Let's actually double check. Let's see. It's going to be the blue moon average right here. Yeah. They're actually crossing right now. Uh, a simple moon average cross is going to be much, or sorry, a, an exponential moon average cross is going to be exponentially more powerful actually. And to be fair, I mean, it's, you know, it's not really in danger of happening at this exact moment, but I would give Bitcoin some time to essentially offset within this region for a little bit more between the 377 this guy right here on the daily specifically and the 200 exponential moon average give it some time within there and that's why i do say while you know technically a lot of things do point towards a further resolution to the downside um it, it, could, it could take some time and i wouldn't and i wouldn't be too surprised to see like another anemic bounce within this region and you know if you want the biggest hoping that i can give you right now technically speaking <laughs> this is not much but technically speaking uh cme would 
still be operating on higher lows right here if it can reverse right here is it reversing right here right now no absolutely not in fact there's zero signals of it at reversing right here right now we need at least uh monday and tuesday so it will not happen on monday earliest could happen on tuesday and you will it, it should be very obvious you know bitcoin probably bases off around the 200 simple and then you see some sort of reversal dildo formation and then you have confirmation back above basically the 21 in this case which is bound uh, 39,000 bucks if that were to happen okay fair enough you know all is well and good and we could talk about targets back up towards uh, deeper forty thousand dollar territory but until that happens um it doesn't necessarily look like the picture of health and fitness in fact also following up on yesterday's uh youtube shorts we, also, we of course did confirm that hidden bearish divergence so that was giving the extra drive coming into the overnight session so i think this is honestly where i want to leave this video for today in fact um perhaps i could have done this in a shorts format um perhaps per, uh, perhaps that would have been better uh but then again you know there's a little bit of nuance in this as well so realistically you know what am i looking for right here on a saturday a little bit of a sideways range uh general direction down obviously whoops let me just get this right here but over the weekend saturday would i be surprised if we if we pop back up uh even close to like thirty six thousand bucks definitely possible here i'm not necessarily looking for further information to the downside over the weekend is kind of my main disposition again mostly based off of low term time for momentum oscillators we can get the four hour stokes pointed back up with the closure above 35.7 that looked decent enough um for a move perhaps into the uh, mid 36s but for right now you know short term hourly 30, uh, 34 6 to the downside versus about 36 uh, 150 to the upside uh, short term you know does bitcoin trade back up to 35 8 looks uh, looks relatively likely um let's see what is a what is a 30 minute say yeah 30 minutes kind of fighting its way out there i suppose not not really getting any, anything too obvious right here but realistically it's the break of this little short-term structure right here that's going to drive the next uh potential interesting trade again to the downside uh looking at looking just above 33 about uh, anywhere between about 33 even and about 33 4 33.5 and uh to the upside well i think a little bit less likely but still very much possible you know weekend is kind of strange times like the twilight zone uh, perhaps I'd be looking at a move uh, all the way up to 37,000 bucks, actually, if we do take out 36,150, uh, at the very least, somewhere around 36,7 to 36,8 region. So with all of that said, I just want to see if I missed anything major right here. Yeah, we do see volatility expanding right now on the four hours. So we actually finally did see that expand about a day later than what I was thinking of, but eh, fair enough in this case. The thing with this is, though, is that it is expanding within the direction of, well, a downtrend. So uh, while, you know, bounces are probably uh, welcomed over the weekend, um, trend continuation, uh, as, as long as this is expanding, is well within the context of a downside trend. Um, I feel like there's something major that I'm missing right now. Yeah, 12 hour TSI turning down. We already got that from yesterday. Uh, what about 12 hour or what about 12 hour or sorry, daily? Um, uh, daily is actually in danger of doing the same thing as well and playing out the same trend line from our last few highs right here. Oh, that's nasty. Uh, will not cross below today or, well, barring a $4,000 uh, dump Ola from, from where we're at right now at 31.5. Well, that will naturally edge down. Now, I would say the other, or well, nope, this would not be helping right here. Daily RSI also losing the exponential. Uh, again, not too, I mean, not, 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 not too like massively concerning right there. It is more or less neutral to slightly bearish. Um, but uh, I'd say the one other hopium thing that I can give you for right now as well is while the jewel did play out that move all the way to the fib here, and while it is expected to get a pullback from that region, I would be looking for it to now curl back down around here. If you get another buy signal somewhere in here, assuming that they all start to kind of curl together, that would be that would be a decent at the very least, you know, local low or perhaps a you know a few thousand dollar rally uh, if that. But we'll see that one in real time, and obviously that's not happening not gonna be happening anytime soon either i mean it's gonna at least that at the very best take um you know maybe till yeah basically end of next week so you'll have perhaps that to look forward to and perhaps uh expiration does bring on some new some new uh direction as people roll over their contracts but for right now uh sideways sideways over the weekend a little bit of boring stuff and hopefully that is in some way useful perhaps i'll record a short later if something uh happens outside of the guise of this little range right here and with that said, I'd like to wish you the best, best, and the happiest. Take care. See you soon.